Hello guys and welcome back to another video on the channel. So today I thought I'd do a tutorial how to get the 737-800 Zebra mod uh, up and run from cold and dot to ready to taxi. Uh, that's right to on that taxiway right behind me. Uh, we're currently sitting at uh, Kilo Lima Alpha Sierra which is McCarran International Airport in the USA in Nevada. Uh, we're going to be set up for a flight that's going from Las Vegas to Los Angeles. I'm not sure why that that gate is not connected to the plane properly. It's going to be a bit of a massive hop for the, uh, the passengers like coming from that uh, the tunnel onto the plane like Jesus. <laughs> I was having you it would be that much of a gap but uh, I don't really know fully how to use auto gate yet or oh, maybe maybe it's not even me maybe it's just the way this scenery is set up. But uh, yeah we're going to be doing a cold and dark uh, set up tutorial. This will work for the 737-800 and the 737-700 Ultimate and I think there's a 900, I'm not really sure but if there is then it should work for the 900 as well. The 900 ER is just basically the 800 but longer and then take the length of two 700s. But we're sitting in the, uh, we've got the Tennessee 1 logo for Southwest, I mean livery sorry. Uh, we're sitting at gate Charlie 19 which is a Southwest gate at uh, McCarran International Airport uh, but yeah I think we'll get a uh, hop right in here and the first thing we have here is a little ground power available that's the only thing that will have illuminated on the whole plane so guess what we're gonna flick that we're gonna turn that on uh, some airports will require you to have a GPU but this one doesn't um, yeah but the second thing we're gonna want to do is you're gonna come out of the overhead panel here well, we're going to stay on the overhead panel for now, and we'll have a little but a uh, little switch of our DC. That is the battery switch. Click that on. I don't know why that was really delayed there, but uh, it doesn't really matter much which order you turn the ground power on and the battery. You can do either one first. It actually doesn't matter. But uh, this, uh, the next thing we want to do is we'll have electric hydraulic pumps here. Switch them on. Engine one and two pumps are already on, but engine one and two are not on yet. So we're going to get a low pressure issue there. Uh, that is normal. Next thing we'll do is we'll turn the left AFT pump on and the centre one if you have sent up fuel but we don't have any. Uh, we're not actually doing this light so the fuel shouldn't really matter because yeah it's just for tutorial. Do a cross fuel valve check, it'll go to bright then dim. That is all good, bright then off. This is basically the preliminary uh, flight checks uh, just before you get anything really properly up and running. So we're going to come down to the pedestal here. Again, if things are dark, then you do have little uh, switches here, little, uh, little uh, knobs to um, brighten things up. So we're going to do that. It's because of the shadows and that. See things too much yet. Turn a shake, breaker, and the panel lights up. Chart lights, and I've really used them. They never really do much, to be honest. Uh, yeah, we've got the fuel uh, left fuel pump on. We're not going to put all of them on just yet. Because uh, we're still going to go through the preliminar preliminary flight checks. We don't really want to be using too much fuel when we do this. Uh, we're going to come over to the fireball test yet. We're going to see a little test logo here. Click that left. That's right. I mean, it doesn't really matter what you're doing. But if we flick it left, we see fault and APU. Uh, DET operative. And that's checked. We're going to flick it right. We're going to have engine 1 overheat. Uh, engine 1, engine loop power unit, engine 2. Engine 2 overheat real well. Then we're going to eliminate. We're going to have the fireball on the captain side and the first side eliminate, and the master caution uh, lights eliminate. So if they eliminate, then that is good. That's all working. We're going to click that FMC thing. I don't know why it's doing that, but as you can see, we've got the ultimate and the radar screens are completely off. Now to fix that, we're going to uh, come over at the overhead again, switch these two little knobs right up here to align. Uh, sorry, nav, not align, nav. So they're going to switch over, saying align now. Uh, you don't really need to do this, but we'll do an LED test. But you don't really need to. Make sure the AFT guard is closed. That's uh, basically the I think it's called the emergency location transmitter. I think that's what it stands for. Uh, what else? Cabin temperatures. Click that one to the left, one to the right. Leave that one in the middle. Uh, the recirculation fans. We don't really need to actually touch them. So we can just leave them. We just speed my test. I will turn on the night vision goggles because it does look a little bit dark. And uh, 
Yeah, these aren't really illuminated, these. Should we max test one? This is the higher one. Lower one. Still want to test, we'll just leave that for the minute because usually when I click it, it doesn't really do anything till later on. I'm not really, I haven't really figured that out. But I'm still using this uh, luminous clean myself. Flight recorder test, that light should just go off. That means that's working. Close that guard and it's off. And we'll, ch uh, we'll do some more light tests. So we're going to have to turn the night vision goggles off. Accept the master caution and I'm going to come down to here. Now you're going to see that little autopilot test. Flick it in the one position, all the lights should come up yellow. Flick it in the down position, you should get one yellow, two reds. So that's basically autopilot auto first and the FMC test. We'll do it on the first side. First officer would do his. Doing the outside checks at the minute. But, um, yeah, speaking of the outside checks, uh, we're going to be testing the early runs, things like that. Left and right. Nope, right. I think that goes right anyway. I don't think it matters which one you click. We'll do a rudder test. We'll go all the way right here. If you do have an axis configured to it, then it should do that quicker. And we'll go all the way right. Well, all the way back to zero, then all the way to 15 right. Well, it's a bit above 15, but whatever. You get the point. So I'm going to bring that back there, the rudder trim back in at the centre. Just make sure that's centred. And now we're going to check the circuit breakers. And I think we'll turn the aviation, no, the night vision goggles back on for that. Make sure nothing's popped out, which nothing has. The pilot doesn't really operate the circuit breakers, it's usually the flight engineer that does if you have one. So nothing's popped out, that's all good. Now we're going to come down to the bottom here, make sure that the landing gear extension door, uh, the manual well, the man and manual landing gear release door, make sure that's closed, which it is. And next, I think that might be all the pre preliminary checks, except from the storm one test, because we don't do that yet. Uh, actually, make sure the emergency exit light guard is closed. That light should come off, that means that the emergency exit lights are on. Uh, we'll come onto the top, make sure the yaw damper is on, that light should come off. And make sure, I think these have just got it all stay auto, these are all good. Uh, all the DC uh, amps and things like that, you can pretty much leave all this, the only thing you'll ever need to use is the battery. But we don't really use any of this. Navigation, make sure they're all on both. Displays, uh, make sure they're on auto and make sure that one's on both. Cross field valve, I've already checked that. Van and lights, don't need to be on at the minute. And I think what we'll do now is we will start up the auxiliary power unit. Actually, no, we'll not do that yet. I think we'll, we might, we'll set up the flight plan first before we do any of that. Uh, we need to do the uh, camera mess up there. It usually goes upside down sometimes, which we are. Uh, we'll do a light test since I nearly forgot to do that. That's basically going to make sure all the lights come on. If there's one that isn't illuminated, then uh, well, I think it depends which lights, but you've usually got uh, spare bulbs in here. Now, you can't use them in the flight sim, but in real life, to replace one of these, you will get one of the spare bulbs out of this panel here. But uh, let's make sure all the lights are uh, illuminated. The fire bell usually doesn't illuminate. Check the overhead and check the pedestal. So everything's illuminated. All the autopilot panels. Make sure the lights are all illuminated and they are. We can turn that uh, off. Now if you want to turn the brightness down, I don't really see the point, then you flip that one down. But yeah, it's pretty much turning crucial light brightnesses down. So pretty much always want them bright, so there's not really any point in turning them down. Uh, next, uh, I think we'll set up the route now. So we're going to come down to the FMC here. Uh, this little knob here, that's, this just changes the brightness of the FMC. I usually use, use it on max brightness, because there's not really any point turning that down. Uh, we haven't got the IRS aligned yet, so we can't enter that yet. But we can go to route. And we've got these thick white bars here. That means it's like crucial information that you need. 
So the origin is kilo lima. Actually, well, clear so you can see what I'm doing. Then alpha Sierra, and we're going to kilo lima alpha X-ray, which is KLX. So Macau International to Las Vegas. And the checkpoint we're going to be using is the only one is Hotel Echo Charlie. We're going to be using the SID, which is the uh, standard like, departure. Uh, we're going to be using vectors up to Hector, Hector, which is Hector. Hotel Echo Charlie. I can't even speak. But uh, yeah, we're going to be we're going to be vectoring up to that. And the departure we're going to be using is the McCarran Four, I believe it is. So we're going to go to departure. And rifle. You're gonna be. In a, we'll go over a bit of this uh, page here. Departure. No. The route. These are your checkpoints, basically. So, these are the kind of waypoints that you're gonna go over when you're an autopilot. Usually in cruise, and you're gonna like turn over these, and these are gonna be basically get you from the departure all the way up to the standard terminal arrival uh, approach that you've selected for whatever runway. So yeah. We've got that little beep that's up here, and it says NI or position. That usually takes 11 minutes to align. We're going to go to the initial reference page, and it's just our position, uh, IRS position. Now, I know you've got this up here, and you could enter that in the scratch pad, then put it in there, but you're not going to do that because then it usually fails it. So, what you're actually going to do is you're going to hit next page, and see so you have GPS left here. going to grab this one on the scratch pad. Then you're gonna put it in here. Then the ultimate and the radar should come on. Now, as you can see, we've got uh, the ultimate like in inches. Some airports use inches. Uh, that's this is what I'm talking about, Dania. Yeah. But uh, KLA, well, McCarran International uses hectopascals. So we're gonna switch that in the HPA for hectopascals and the QNH. I think is one zero two seven at the minute. That's the pressure at sea level. Turn that at 1027. I think it is. We're just going to check over that. So, the, yeah, the QNH is 1027. And uh, next, we'll go over uh, the departure out of Las Vegas. Uh, we're going to be porting on the, yep, the McCarran 3. So, you're going to want to get the charts whatever airport you're using you're going to want to enter the IC80 code into like a google search or something so you can get shots and things like that up and it's going to come up with uh, takeoff minimums things like that so we're going to enter the minimums the minimum for the McCarran 3 is going to be 5 to 9 so that's it, your minimum ascent rate when you come into land you're going to enter the minimum ascent rate so we're going to make sure that is in barometer. I'm going to turn a couple more lights on here. I'm going to get these lights down here. So we can turn off the yoke as well. So we're going to go into barometer. I don't know why that wasn't doing that yet. Right there. So it's 529 on the barometer. Uh, that's this down here by the way. Which are all the way up to 529, that's taking ages, I think. Yeah, if I click that, that's way quicker. So that's the minimum ascent rate uh, set, the minimums. So, next, I think I'll come over to the checklist that I have. I've uh, done a couple of preliminaries and things like that. Uh, we'll get that up just for now. You can download these off websites as PDF files if you want to use checklists. Um, Having a look for you, I'll put it in here for some reason. I will go to the pre flight. Uh, some of the stuff I've already done. The back, uh, the pot and break is set. We're just going to check this. Check that the light is illuminated. I think I might have messed the stuff from there. But the light's illuminated, and we've got the battery. God, yep, that's closed. Let's run on battery power. And the standby power, make sure that guard is closed, which it is. That's bus transfer. <laughs> Stand my powers up here. So that guard's closed, just check on that. The left centre fuel pump. Uh, it's not required because we don't have any fuel in the centre, we're just using engines, so we'll have one of them on. 
and we'll go to the APU and we'll start the APU. I just tell them what to do now. So to start the APU, uh, you're just going to make sure that the engine one and two packs are off because if they're on, then you're not going to be able to start the APU. APU stands for auxiliary power unit, and that's the little thing at the back of the plane. And uh, that just basically gives you power to the plane so that you don't have to use ground power because if you're using ground power, then you basically can't really leave your gate. Otherwise, the power's going to disconnect. So start the APU. Make sure the isolation valve, which is this, is open. Make sure the left and right pack packs are in the auto position. And you're going to hear a little bit of a noise uh, coming up there. So you're going to flick the APU into the on position. It's going to come up with lower pressure. And then you want to hit start. That's going to start. Just give it a couple of seconds. It should go up to about 8. Then it should stabilise. I don't run about 4. Once it does stabilise, you'll get a light illuminating here, which is seen APU generator, APU gen off bus. Once you get that light illuminated, you're going to flick these two switches so you get APU power, so you're not running off ground power anymore. So that's going to stabilise round about now. Flip the APU power on. So now we're on off APU power. Uh, now we're not on ground power. So if you did have a GPU connected, which is uh, what you need to connect if you don't, if you can't get ground power. So if you did have that connected, then you can go ahead and disconnect that now. Now we're going to set up the departure and actually we're going to go to initial reference because there's some. Well, where's navigation? Hang on, menu. FMC. Index, I think. Position, there we go. So the reference airport is going to be Kilo Lima Alpha Sierra, which is Las Vegas, so whatever airport you're departing from. Uh, the gate, you don't really need to enter this, but we are Charlie 1 Niner. So we're going to uh, enter Charlie 19 for the gate. Uh, if you go to route again, if you want to, you don't have to, but you can't enter like uh, your flight number if you're departing at a certain time, but we're not really departing at any time, so we'll just enter something random like Southwest 1926, even though it's 1926 in game now. Yeah, I think that's a. Uh, it's not, that's not the local time by the way. I think that's like Zulu or something. So we'll enter something like Southwest. 1926 so that's going to be like the course and things like that uh, but again you don't need any of that if we go over a cru climb, cruise and descent uh, no I think it's just climb and cruise you're going to enter your cruise altitude which is going to be flight level 280 flight level 280 is 28,000 feet flight level 100 is 10,000 feet so I think every flight level is 100 feet just going to check over all of this that your speed and things like that and I think the fuel should sit up when we enter that in a minute so that is looking all good I usually just leave it as it is I've got page again it's going to come up with a fuel uh, ZFW I'm not really sure what it stands for at the minute but we're going to go onto the RV tab here. I'll leave a link in the description to download the RV tab. I mean, you get it as default in X Plane. Well, when you get the 737 Z board, the 737 700 Ultimate. But you just get more options and things like that. But fuel weight and balance should be there as default. Uh, the paid load is £37.2. Uh, ZFW, we're going to enter uh, 128.4. going to enter that into there, just going to give her that number there, maximum altitude, no that's a maximum altitude, flightable to it's zero, I think that's in something low because we're not, we haven't really got too much fuel, but I'm not really going to be doing this flight anyway, but it should be just enough to actually get to Las Vegas I think, uh, no Los Angeles, so I usually do about 2.2, .2. oh, dashed up.
So we're at a 2.2 on that. Cost index, I'm not really too sure what that is at the minute, so I'll just get a zero. Then it's gonna come out with that N1 limits. Uh, the V1, no, that's uh, not really too sure what that is, but you can just leave that at the minute. Uh, V1, now V1 is your rotation speed, that's the speed that you're gonna rotate the aircraft off the runway. So depending on your weight, if you're heavier, then the V1 speed is going to be higher. But the V1 speed for us is about 131 knots. Now the V1 speed when you're empty is 130 knots as default on the 737s. I don't think it matters which 737 it is, I think it's always 130. And an empty weight. The V2, uh, v VR speed is going to be 141 knots, that's nearly at 141. VR speed is usually when you start like coming up and things like that. V2 speed is basically when you're probably like too heavy to take off and you're probably calculated like stuff wrong. If you get if I get a V2 speed and you haven't lifted off lifted off then you should probably stop because having V2 is probably the point of no return. Uh, we're gonna enter 152 one five two uh, one five what do I saying two one five one on the V2 speed. I usually set the speed mark to about just above V2 as well. So now I've got all the. Um, hang on, there's one thing that I forgot. Take off flaps are just going to be 15. I usually don't go anything under or above 15 on departure. Verify the takeoff speeds, which we we'll have. And we're going to go to route. You're just going to look, just double check over everything like this. You're going to go to legs. Yeah, uh, actually, departure arrival. Nearly forgot that. Departure is going to be. Uh, for this airport we're going to depart on runway 25 right so then you have SIDS, these are the uh, departure like which you can take out of the airport there's quite a couple of them but make sure you get the charts because if you just enter any random one then it's going to take you the longer route round you don't want to do that we're going to be using the McCarran 4 which is my Charlie Charlie Rummy November 4 for departure we're going to hit on departure and arrival again so it's KLX, this is basically where you're taking off from then where you're riding from. If you're wondering why it's got a rival, because uh, on um, KLS and it hasn't got a uh, departure KLX, well, if you take off, then you know you maybe you may have an emergency. You might need to land back at uh, yeah. So if you want to, you can't enter the stars. So uh, I'm not really too sure. I think. Um, I think that one's southbound, so I think that will be all right. So we're gonna set up. That and we'll do ILS for runway one right. So that's basically an emergency if you need to come back and land at the airport. It's basically you've got that all set up. We're gonna go to arrival. And actually I don't think we need to set this up, I think that's gonna lock that in. But that's basically just if you ever need an emergency land back at the airport, you have your arrivals for your departure airport already here. So make sure you do have charts for arrival at even if you're taking off at the airport, because in a minute you might need to land back at that airport for whatever reason. Maybe one of your passengers might be sick, you might need to turn back to the airport, so always have that in mind. Uh, KLDX arrival, we're going to be arriving via, when I find it, uh, Downey 4, that is the star we're going to be using. We're going to be on the ILS for runway 2, 4, right. So that's uh, coming in basically over Hollywood Hills. Most of the arrivals in LAX do come over Hollywood Hills, but this is the best one for runway 24 left, I think. 24 right, sorry. You can use runway 24. Well, down E4, you can either use runway 25 left or 25 right or 24 left or 24 right at LAX. But the star, the star is a standard terminal arrival, so it's basically like the opposite of a SID. You've got SIDs and stars. A SID is basically the route out of the airport. The star is basically. The route kind of coming into the airport. Uh, use stars for like, basically for restrictions and things like that. And see if you've got terrain in the way of the airports, uh, runways, and things like that. It's basically going to see if you safely get you down to the runway. And using them, you're going to basically, it's basically going to help you get your speed and altitude right for landing. Because if you don't have them, you'll be coming at the airport quite quickly. And you do have uh, noise restrictions, things like that to take and uh, to keep in mind. But yeah, there'll probably be other tutorials on noise restrictions and things like that. If we go to uh, uh, holding program, that doesn't really matter, to be honest. Uh, we're just going to go to legs. Make sure you have no discontinuity. So if you do have discontinuity, you're just going to hit uh, left here. Get that on the scratch pad and put that in here. It's 
going to get rid of that. You're just going to make sure that you have nothing like mental going on. So basically, if you have maybe from one checkpoint to another, if it's just like a couple of thousand little commands, then that's probably the wrong checkpoint. And the altitude and things like that, that is all set. And the speed. This is basically the speed it wants you to do on the left, yeah. So, Jetsat is uh, going to be 145 knots. That's it, uh, the last checkpoint. That's basically the VREF speed. VREF speed is going to be your speed when you're coming into the land. So, pretty much at this point, we're going to have a stabilised approach for the runway. And uh, somewhere around about Mike Ekarumi Charlie Echo is when we're going to arm the approach mode. Uh, you're just going to basically brief yourself over um, yeah, uh, your arrival and departure. So everything's looking good. We're going to hit activate. You can either do this on the legs or the root page. We're going to hit that and we're going to hit execute. Now if we've got the legs, it should come purple. That's the first checkpoint. going to be Las Vegas 03. Which the altitude for that is going to be 2581. The speed is going to be 205 uh, knots and that is in 3.8 nautical miles. But it's probably going to change by the time we get to the runway. So we're going to execute that. So th now you have an active flight plan. If you go over the radar here, you're going to see that you have like a purple line. And if we go up here, above this little thing here, we can zoom out on the range. And it's basically showing you your navigation and that little purple thing there. That is the SID. Well, that is uh, the route. The yeah, that's the SID. Then that's going to be vectors to Hotel Echo Charlie, which is a checkpoint. Make sure you know you're steering, by the way. Before we get out and taxi, make sure that is on a normal, which it is. Keep on the night vision goggles. And steering and things like that, we're going to test that uh, as soon as we've finished pushback. Uh, you've got all your route and things like that set up, you're going to start the flight leg. That uh, cabin crew and things like that. Uh, it'll basically add a realistic experience. Once I've done that, I usually Click the welcome speech by the captain. Well, hey, shaman, uh, from flight deck, we'd like to add a welcome course. This is possibly uh, some light bumps or some uh, choppy airs. We can climb out to, as a precaution, keep our flight attendants uh, seated for a few minutes. Make sure we know, uh, you know, what that ride's going to be like uh, before uh, they get up. Also, appreciate it if everyone would uh, remain in our seats uh, during that time. Thanks for being with us today. I don't know why they're going through the safety information at, at the minute, but yeah, I think this is just the Southwest one that does that. It's not even Southwest, we're using the American one. Oh, hang on. And if you've got the settings on here, you can basically set your um, one, different two, uh, announcements. Three, four, United, Southwest one. So we're going to go to Southwest and we'll do that again. Now we can shut the cockpit door now, uh, the cabin crew will usually do that for you. Now I've set the FMC, uh, we'll pretend that we've requested the flight plan clearance on the, on, uh, clearance on the air traffic control but we don't need to do that because it's flight in. Transponder we're not going to uh, bother with that. Uh, you can just, you can, uh, that's going to be your scope, the, AT, the air traffic control will give you that, I think this is a, yeah we're just going to scope something random. Because it doesn't really uh, matter for now, but it would in a real life situation, they give you a score code, and you're going to score that on the transponder down here. And I think that needs to go to standby actually, on the pedestal. Right, that's on standby, so that'll be scoping. That basically gives the air traffic control, like, your, um, basically, like, all your information, things like that, just on the radar. And the IS uh, match speed is going to be set. Uh, we'll do above V2, I usually do about 165 knots to 170, we'll do 165 uh, on our first uh, speed, just coming out of runway 25 right. Uh, LNAV is going to be, uh, you're going to, well, we're going to set that to the frequency for Hotel Echo Charlie, which is what we've got the vectors to, so I'll just get that up now. So that's going to be 112.7 uh, all the way out uh, of the star. 
112.7 so that's basically going to be like your um, basically like your navigation you're going to like set a course to that uh, I think it should come up with a course on the sheet yeah, I'm not really sure we'll just have a look over this check the SID so the course is going to be 212 to Hotel Echo Charlie so we're going to set the course that's basically for emergency navigation in case you need it in case that you've got something messed up with the checkpoint you can still affect that to Hotel Echo Charlie so yeah that's going to get your course and things like that and uh, the frequency we're going to have a standby frequency which we'll set that on if you click that again that's going to go to active 112.7 so that's going to I think that's such a little green thing on here basically for your course and things like that so that's what the L nav is, the V nav, uh, we don't need to set that minimums for reference uh, we'll set that to barometer, we've already set the minimums the minimum ascent rate once you get in a cruise flight you're going to set the minimums again to the minimum descent rate for whatever airport you're landing at uh, the doors you're going to make sure they're closed uh, actually no we're not even at that yet ultimate uh, reference is going to be a couple of inches but for Las Vegas it's in hectopascals which is that there, we've already set that the comms and radios uh, are set, the auto brakes we're going to set them to RTU now you're going to set them to 123 uh, one, or max when you land them, the, what the auto brake does is it kind of slows down the aircraft automatically when you come into land and things like that so they're going to be RTO and the comms and set yep we'll just set them now uh, on the L nav I think that was and the doors you go, to make sure that the doors are closed you're going to go uh, just out of the RV tab here on the main menu you're going to click right here now this is only if you have the RV tab so if you don't have it well I might leave a link in the description to RV tab and I will leave a link to the 737 TV more to make sure these are all closed well if you click on them and it says closed and they're open you're going to hear the doors going so the doors are closed if it is open and all them that means they're actually closed I'm just going to check that if we've done that I'm going to go back to the charts now we've done that, we're ready for the before start checklist. But it's a request pushback. You might have a assigned key to that if you don't have the better. I'll tell you what, we'll shut the cockpit door here. I thought that door opened there. Then be more real. Have the better pushback mod. You can go into ground surfaces. Better pushback, pre plan the pushback. We're going to be departing on, departing on 25 right today. So we're going to click on this. It's going to take you out here. Uh, we're not going to set that. I think let's just delete, right? So we're just going to put this virtual aircraft where we want to uh, set the pushback to. We're going to set it to going to try and get it straight on the taxi lane now you're going to left click once it's green you're going to hit all right captain, captain got the directions, directions. let, let me, me know through the menu when you're ready. ready so now we're pretty much ready to start the engines and things like that uh, but we'll start them on pushback when he gives us clearance to we're going to hit request pushback and the push cart is going to come over to the aircraft great news captain your toes coming oh we've got the jolly one again <laughs> jolly pushback marshal uh, we're going to put the fuel pumps on as well. We can double check everything over here, make sure the yaw damp has on. And uh, we don't need to use this again. Just basically go over everything quickly just before you start pushing back. Make sure the fast and seat belt signs are on for the passengers. And make sure the probe, uh, actually no we don't need to put that on yet, we'll do a window uh, heat test, make sure we get all the lights coming on, that's good. And we'll put the probe heat on after we start on the engines. And you can hear that little bell thing, that means the tool is connected to the aircraft right now. Make sure the isolation valve uh, 
is open and the packs come in at the off position. All right. Looks like the doors and hatches are closed and we're ready to connect. And we'll also, before we connect, we'll set the flight altitude, which is going to be flight level 2 H0 for this flight. You're usually probably going to set it to 2 H0, that's usually the average. Set the land altitude, usually to 100. That's up pretty much done, we're going to make sure that light illuminates there. And the IRS, uh, we'll already check that as displayed. Service center phone is off. And we'll also do a stall one and test now. Since it's probably work now. One. Two, that's all working. Make sure the passenger oxygen is on. You'll know that because the, the light will illuminate. And the engine, no, the uh, emergency exit lights are off and we are ready to connect. I think you said set port, I don't know. But uh, we'll hit uh, reconnect. I don't know why it's reconnected. We're just connecting. Board. Welcome aboard, Captain. Toast connected, bypass stands inserted. Go ahead and kill the parking brake when you're ready to go. So we'll release the parking brake. And we'll set the flaps to 15. I don't know why that came up there. Here comes the pushback. Light them up. Light them up, that just means start the engines. I don't know why we're getting this really jolly guy, but yeah. We're gonna keep the APU bleeder on, make sure the packs are off, and we're ready to start engine number two. Since it's on number two, you're gonna make sure the switch is switched to the whichever engine you start, which is number two. You're gonna come down here, and that's gonna start rolling in there. You're gonna wanna make sure that gets to 25%. Since it gets into 25%, uh, by the way, there's one thing I forgot to do is the take off throttle test. Make sure that goes red and the lights come on, which they didn't. Looks like it. I think I'll test that later. We should have tested that before, but we'll test that later. Right, that's at 25. We're going to make sure that engine rolls in. Engine number two is rolling in. It's going to stabilise just after about 300 RPM. Actually, probably about 300 and about 400 RPM. Sorry, that's when it's going to start to stabilise. Once it's stabilised fully, it's going to automatically switch into auto. Once it's done that, you're going to hit continuous, and you're going to flick the switch to the left engine, which is engine number one. Flick that a GRD. Engine number one is going to be rolling in. Again, make sure it gets to 25%. After you've done that, you can put the mixture of the engine from cut out into idle. So that's 25, engine 1 rolling in. It's going to stabilise at about 100, uh, 400 again. And as you can see, we are being pushed back. I do apologise for that glitch of the clouds, I'm just going to uh, fix that. You guys don't need to do this, I'm just going to fix my clouds here. That's went to continuous, we're going to set, uh, no auto, we're going to set that to continuous. That fixes my clouds, so set that to continuous. As soon as you've done that, uh, you can switch the probe heat on, which is yeah, make sure all the lights come off. And the window heat is supposed to also be on. And the on ice, uh, you're going to switch that. And basically, if it's lo loads of clouds and you think it's probably going to be freezing cold out there, and your aircraft could clog up with ice when you're going through the clouds. Just about done here. Go ahead and set your parking brake. We're going to set the parking brake, but uh, if you're going through clouds and that, and it's going to be quite cold. Yeah, we're just going to tow. Give me just, just a moment. moment. Uh, then we're going to turn that on ice on. But it's a clear day. There's not really any clouds, so we're going to keep the on ice on. But the window heat's always going to stay on. But uh, once we've uh, got the engines fully started, we can then go over to engine 1 and 2 power. So that should do that. Now we can switch off the APU to do that. We're going to switch on the engine 1 and 2 bleeder. Switch off the APU bleeder. Uh, bleeder. Then that is going to come off. And the isolation valve needs to go into auto. Left and right packs need to also go into auto. We'll click thumbs up on the pushback. So now he's going to disconnect and uh, go. So now we're on engine 1 and 2 air power. Uh, we can get the before taxi checklist. And we're also going to make sure the position, standby, and anti collision lights are on. Logo light, if it's dark, you're going to switch it on, but it's not dark, so we don't really need that on. Taxi lights going to come on. When we're turning off, signal on pen on the left. Take it easy and have a safe flight. So he's going to go. So the runway turn off is going to be on the right, because you use the runway turn off lights if you're coming on or off the runway. 
even though it's just run with two enough. But I'm nice, we don't need them yet till we've got up to the runway. Um so we've already started the engine. She's gonna close the cockpit door, but I think we've already closed that. Uh, before taxi checklist, then a one and two, we'll just switch it on. Appropriate is on. Wing and IS is not required for this flight, but if it's going to be freezing cold, then you can send the and IS on. And the engine and IS, same thing, it's not required on this flight. Packs and isolation valve, or uh oh, oh. Make sure the APU bleed air is off, which we've done, and the auxiliary power unit is off. Engine soft switches, just double check there, and continuous. And make sure the elevator trim is set for takeoff, so I, I like to trim it down a little bit, but that's. That's pretty much perfect there. We ask that you do us a big favor. So then I'll go through the um, safety checks. And I'm not really sure what recall is at the minute. The lower display unit, you know, that is this. We're going to check hydraulic pressure for the minute. Uh, that's all good. Make sure it's in 2840 on both engines. That's a uh, good pressure there. So if it's not 2840, then there might be something wrong. But usually if one of them is on 2810, then that's usually still alright. But the lower display unit, let's turn that off, we'll just simply turn the brightness all the way down. A little fuel check, even though you should do that at uh, the runway, but you can do it now. We'll hit reset, then the rate is 0.61. We'll just check that with the first officer as well, that's what you do. We'll close that nose wheel steer on there. And uh, we'll have the airport and data on. Now you don't need to do it on the first officer, because there is none, unless you're flying multiplayer. I think we're pretty much ready now, we'll get back to the checklist. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything ready. Just make sure we've got the APU off. And we'll turn on the wheel well lights. Because then, when you do that, the, the captain tells uh, the cabin crew to sit down for the departure. Usually that's when they start going through the... Um, usually that's when they start going through the safety features because if you shut it on at the runway then they're going to start going through that then it's just not going to make sense but yeah that's pretty much everything up to departure uh, I mean not departure uh, taxi got everything set up we're now pretty much ready to taxi and we can release the parking brake and you can get taxiing so that's how it uh, set up the 737-800 and it does work for the 737-800 uh, up to um, taxi. Hope you like the video. I'll just fix that and lose your steering. Uh, there's one thing that I forgot to check actually is the flight controls. I'll just knock the flaps a bit there. Set them to 15. So the flaps are 15. Did we set the fuel page? I think we did. I think we set that up anyway. But um yeah, just check over your legs one last time. And you're gonna check the flight controls to do that. Uh, we'll go into the night vision goggles so we can see. We'll go full left, full right, down and up. And as you can see if we do that, I'm just gonna check that uh, there. And we're gonna go well nose your left, nose your right. And that's centered. Rudder left, rudder right. That is not working because I have this plug in on. Disable that. Rudder left, rudder right. Got full travel. So that's working. I don't know why that tilts the camera. That's an option that I can turn off there. But that is pretty much everything uh, from up to taxi. So we'll set that part and break because I'm not actually doing this like it's just for tutorial. So that is how you get the 737 started up. Uh, the 800 and the 700 and it might work on the 900. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget like and subscribe. I might do more tutorials on this, like landing and stuff like that. But again, I am still uh, learning the thing myself. But thank you for watching. Don't forget like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.